This aircraft doesn't exist. Hey, I'm Smoonie Chad, and you heard me right. The plane, if you can really call it that, that we're recreating today doesn't actually exist. No, I don't mean it's from a video game or a movie or something like that. It's a real but never built concept by the Comoff Design Bureau in the late 60s called the Ka 35D, which basically looks like a Chinook in a C 390 had a baby. But weird aircraft love aside, what's not to love about this wacky thing? It would have had two massive, I assume to be counter rotating rotors, two jet engines, a remote cannon in the nose, a whole lot of lifting power, as you can see from this photo of what seems to be one of the only surviving models where it appears that this thing is literally packing both of those vehicles and they look pretty chunky. And though that's just a scale model, that's really all we have to go on about the uh, Ka 35D. Now I really wanted to research the specs on this aircraft, but I ran into quite a problem with that. There's basically no first-hand info about it. I mean, unless you really trust old guy here who says it could carry 100 troops. I mean, I believe that, but old guy said it on a comment. Not exactly who I go to for a source of aircraft info. Old guy. But anyway, it turns out most of the info on this is just from random comments. Uh, most of the things I've heard about it are just from random comments and stuff with very few references to actual material. In fact, I, I couldn't really find anything but one thing that that was the actual source material for a lot of this information about the Ka 35D. And that is the book that this photo is from, which if you've heard anything about this plane or watch any videos on it or anything like that, you've probably seen this photo before. This is a scale model of the plane, much like the one that I showed earlier, but a pretty old picture of it. And this is from this book, which I unfortunately could not find any sort of copy for, I none whatsoever. I couldn't find any ebook for it, couldn't find any way to reference information in it. I really wanted to get straight first-hand information, but really the only thing without the book that I can guarantee is that the name of this was the Ka 35D and it was made by the Kamov Design Bureau. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. But fortunately from that one photo and from that model that seems to be floating around in some Russian museum with people taking pictures of it, God, I'd love to see that thing. <laughs> Fortunately, though, you can pull enough info from those models that do exist and what little information is floating out there to uh, get a pretty good working uh, version of it in KSP. Um, and I think I did a pretty darn good job, though there was some uh, bumps along the way. <laughs> now, I went for more on the side of practicality and usefulness than a 100% exact recreation of it. Like, I could have done some stuff with the cockpits and the clipping the cockpits into the the uh, cargo bays and stuff like that to get the little windows in the cargo bay and made the engines smaller and stuff like that and got it looking spot on probably because I'm using mods in this one this is a stock recreation so I could have got this really spot on using all that stuff but instead of that I decided to go more on the end of practicality and actually make this thing work in uh, the Lathe Wars which this is what uh, it's made for it's going to be used in it and it already has been used in it if you're watching this video you can go see this right now uh, battling it out uh, in the Lathe Wars. It actually has a scene where it does something very special, which you will see at the end of this video too, um, uh, that it's capable of. It, it can it can drop some pretty heavy cargo. Um, but anyway, uh, I heard more on the side of practicality so I could use it in the Lathe Wars and stuff. So it's not an exact 100% carbon copy, but it's very, very functional. And it's going to be used by the KSR in the Lathe Wars because um, they're kind of KSR's theme is kind of a uh, weird Soviet stuff. It's it's Soviet stuff, but stuff that doesn't really exist, or concepts, or modifications of existing or or well-known Soviet hardware. That's going to be kind of their theme for the Lathe Wars. Whereas the USK is going to be the exact opposite, being the uh, United States is uh, weird stuff that doesn't really exist. Maybe that's that's what I want to go for. Just. Just going to put basically any recreations on those two sides. And uh, this is going to be one of the first ones that I've really worked a uh, long time on. Here I'm just putting some circular intakes on top of the rotor hubs, trying to make them look a little bit bigger and more to what they seemed like to me at the time. Though I get rid of those later on and just added a bit too much to the uh, rotors. There's already a lot of spinning there. KSB doesn't like spinning things very much. Um, so, just before anyone mentions it, the flag on the tail fin there that I just added in on some of the other parts of the plane, that is not supposed to be a decal for the Soviet Union or anything like that. That is a 
kind of like Soviet Union parody that is the KSR, a country in a like interactive uh, role play thing called the Lathe Wars, which you can check out on my channel. I mentioned it before, but yeah, just so no one thinks that I'm like thinking that that's like a Soviet uh, flag or something. No, that, that it's a that's a flag that I made up. It's kind of based on Soviet stuff, but it's one that I made up. So um, anyway, here we. Uh, if you didn't notice earlier, I sized up the blades quite a bit on this. Uh, because technically the blades on the ka 35D would have been, at least from all the models and images, would have been, uh, they would have been intersecting each other. They would have like went into each other's uh, rotational disc. There's a word for this, but I'm completely forgetting it. But uh, yeah, they would have been synced up till they didn't hit each other, but they would have been crossing paths. Um, but I didn't do that with this. Uh, I think I just kind of forgot, honestly. Um, but if I would have done the blades any bigger, this would have been even more overpowered than it ended up being. And uh, I, like, I like where it's at right now. So we got a little uh, crew compartment there, and I added two fuel tanks as the uh, two little uh, landing gear uh, nodules. <laughs> the two little landing gear bumps there. And it uh, turns out the landing gear from uh, Airplanes Plus got pretty darn close to the uh, look. The only problem is uh, the Airplanes Plus landing gear is a little bit little bit bad um, here we're just adding some good procedural control surfaces and yes those are all moving uh, I really I really knew that I probably need a lot of control on this thing um, because there's really not that much wing area there and uh, I'm not really sure how it's going to deal with the rotors it's probably gonna be pretty bricky so I just went right on the side of caution and added some full all moving control surface there to get the maximum control surface area that I could um, so yeah, we're just putting the finishes touches on everything and one of the fitting, finishing touches is that really cool remote cannon And then we put some ammo right above it uh, Later on I end up uh, if you notice like adding a few more cans onto it The one in the lathe wars video has a bunch more, but we're just gonna get the testing Which went really well as you can tell Very well, so this thing has a bit of a problem with those uh those airplanes plus landing gear as well as stability and also with one of the rotors going out on it randomly uh, it's got a lot of issues and also I forgot to take the landing gear in there they go <laughs> so we fly it out here we got the jet engines running our rotors keep dying uh, so there's a little bit of work to be done on this <laughs> so first things first I do the most important thing which is add a ladder because it's obviously what it needs it needs a ladder um, but I fixed, I think at least that I fixed the uh, rotors a little bit. I sized them down a tiny bit because uh, I got a bit scared that the size up was maybe what was causing them to uh, mess up a little bit. But uh, I don't really think that's what it was. I think it was more so like what you see me checking there, the alignment of them. I don't think that I had them fully aligned. But if you deploy the uh, airplanes plus landing gear there after you've spawned, they work great. <laughs> So here we are, we're going to take it off, and uh, she's a bit wiggly. Uh, I think that's the same balancing issue with those uh, propellers, well, rotors. Uh, yeah, it just kind of wiggles around and doesn't really get anywhere. I'm just constantly fighting it back and forth, trying to get it to stay level. Kind of reminiscent of what happened with my Osprey. Same kind of, same kind of thing, you know? So uh, it, it makes sense. Also, we have an intake problem because these these uh, rotors actually need like uh, they need intake air. They're, they're jet turbines. So uh, yeah, the the actual jets on this was taking too much air and it w wasn't getting enough forward air. So they were just kind of dying on me. Uh, you may notice me hitting RCS. I've got that link to the rotor lock because um, brakes is for the brakes and I've got that set to the rotor lock so I can keep them separate and actually break the aircraft and keep the rotors running. So, um, yeah, we take it off and somewhat get it flying normally, kind of. We put the autopilot on and it immediately tries to nose off. So we take the autopilot off. <laughs> um, the autopilot really had a time trying to figure this out. And when I was filming the Lathe Wars video with it, um, it, it just kept wanting to nose dive it into the ground. It would pitch straight up because it's, I guess it was detecting it had so much lift from those rotors. So it would just pitch it straight up. It would go to like, 10,000 meters and then just fall straight back down. So yeah, we, we had it kind of go normally there for a bit. 
um, fly like 10 feet normally. <laughs> and then we try to bring it in for a landing, which, uh, well, I guess it is it disastrous, which is an improvement. Nothing's broke yet on this, which is a true wonder of the world that I somehow crashed the nose of this into the runway earlier and have beat it up as much as I have, and it still survived. Very tough little plane. Here I'm just trying to find the landing gear and turn all of the brakes on the landing gear up all the way because we're about to hit the ocean, and that's generally not a good thing for your aircraft. So there we go, we managed to stop it, and I tweaked a few things, balanced the rotors out, and now she flies beautifully. Absolute. Oh, yeah, uh, there's that. Uh, <clears throat> well, maybe it's not completely perfect, but after some more testing and more tweaking, she truly does fly beautifully. I managed to take this thing off and land it on the VAB, as you'll see here in a minute, fly it around, do whatever I wanted with it, and pack a crap ton of cargo too. This has ended up being one of the most useful recreations I've ever done. I kind of wish I would have did it stock, even though I don't know how the heck I would have did that. Um, so I could have used it in some of my career saves because this thing is nimble for a very, very heavy cargo helicopter plane thing that it is. As you can see here, I had basically no issue just kind of winging it first try and landing it on the VAB. Uh, it went right down like a helicopter. You just cut the engines off and uh, it's a helicopter. You turn the engines on and it's a really weird plane. Uh, yeah, no time warping with this thing. That's probably the biggest issue with it. Though I could add like the Airplanes Plus uh, like rotors on there and maybe get it to time warp, but I love stock rotors. Stock rotors are so wonderfully great. So here we are, we're gonna take it off on a little bit of a joy ride, lifting off from the top of the VAB. bring it in for a landing now at the island runway as you can see it uh, holds up pretty good to a uh, long distance flight I even managed to take it up pretty high later on and uh, it lands fairly well as just a traditional like a uh, airplane just turn the rotors down and uh, I mean you can get it so slow look at that I literally stop and hover and then boom it's landed it's really easy to land and kind of hard to crash when you're flying it manually but we have a special mission for this 40 tons of cargo in the back of this bay. A 40 ton tank for the KSR. This is what you probably seen in the video if you watched it. This thing can drop tanks like nobody's business. 40 tons. 40 tons. Flying around cruising, no issue. That is absolutely crazy that this thing can actually carry around 40 tons uh, with what it has. So we drop the tank down there. It's rolling around on the ground. The tank kind of... Eh, it didn't really turn out as good as I wanted it to. It's just a 40 ton hunk of uh, hunk of metal, and uh, it's kind of easy. It's kind of easy to defeat. So the tank you might not be seeing again, but the Ka 35D you probably will. As you've seen in the video, probably the tank got absolutely destroyed by a uh, helicopter. And of course, this tank not being the brightest in a bunch is immediately firing at the plane that dropped it, which is something I wouldn't recommend doing, especially when it has a bunch of guns on it. So uh, we start firing back and immediately get some hits. Those cannons are no joke. They're like a hundred millimeter or something like that. 57 millimeter. Don't, don't quote me on that. I, I don't know. But they're, they're fairly big cannon, cannons that they uh, have on the remote turrets that uh, the Ka has on it. And uh, yeah, I just kind of use the tank as target practice, getting my uh, getting an idea of how to use those two cannons. I stuck one on the tail, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I've heard some people saying that it could have been more heavily armed later on, like a gunship variant. I put it on there because this thing's actually going to be participating in some of the wars and stuff, and so it might need some like defense on its tail against uh, against any kind of fighters or something trying to sneak up on it because it is fairly slow. Gets up to about like 240, 250 or something like that. 
meters per second, but we're not breaking a sound barrier or anything. Definitely not outrunning anyone's uh, anyone's fighter. So uh, something fun that I had with this was that it basically just can pull infinite cobras. It has so much lift, and you've got those engines uh, pointing down that you can just throttle the engines all the way up and just like kind of hover t front side up, tail down, uh, and of course ho hover you know the normal way. Uh, I kept doing that to lose all my uh, horizontal speed so I could land, and it was just really fun just pulling these basically like cobra looking things with this giant aircraft over and over again. <laughs> so there we are, we landed it, dumped all of our cargo out, no issue. I moved the wing placement on this version a little bit so it could haul all that cargo. She takes right back off, ascends like it's literally filled with helium. Uh, I can't express how much I love how this thing turned out. And it gets really, really high altitude. We take it up for a cruise ride into the upper atmosphere. This is very heavily sped up. And it pops right out of the clouds. I can't remember how high exactly this is, but I'm going to guess it's around 7,000, 8,000 meters. And uh, it takes it like a champ, no problem. Can keep and sustain level flight at this altitude. So this is going to be pretty useful for the Lathe Wars. Definitely is going to be used again. Uh, and if you want to see this uh, in action, dropping a tank into battle, go check out the Lathe Wars video, which should be popping up on the screen any second now. Urge you to go check that out. It's at the end of the video. It's kind of the uh, closing out uh, highlight of the video. This thing launches from a carrier and drops a freaking tank. How cool is that? 